For the last almost five years, I've been making content on social media, mostly TikTok, I've been a TikToker, and today I wanna to react to my old TikToks and go through them with you. So this is the evolution of Russell Hartley. I first started social media on TikTok. I had had Instagram before, you know, a few hundred followers or like people that I knew in, in LA or wherever. And it wasn't really like a career thing. It wasn't important for me. I was working a real job. I wasn't really doing this kind of thing. Um, and then during the pandemic, right at the beginning of the pandemic, did I start my social media career? I had no idea what I was really gonna do with it, what the purpose of it was. It was just, let's just start making content since I guess we're all at home and everybody else is too. Might as well get started. So I started posting videos. Um, I'm gonna go back to my very first <laughs> TikTok video ever, who that makes me nervous, and uh, watch it and react to it with you. So let's dive right in. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So you get you get the idea. Basically, I'll tell you how this happened. Actually. There's a podcast, a popular podcast called Call Her Daddy, and th around this time, Alex Cooper talked about how to get like girls' attention online. Now, back then, I wasn't doing this for any reason. There's no like point to make content like this for myself. It's just funny. Alex Cooper was like, you know how to get a girl's attention? Put laughy faces on her emojis. Uh, uh, laughy face emojis under their posts and then see how they react because it's kind of like mean girl vibes I guess that was the thing and it was a joke. It's a funny joke. It, it crushed on Call Her Daddy, whatever And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. So I record screen recorded it and then just just went down my feed lol 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 whatever and it and she was right it did it, it worked like it got a reaction I showed it all the way to the end where like is, is that she actually get a, I get a DM from somebody about this like what is this and I was like oh, I'm just kidding you look great it's all good and she was like oh, okay lol and that was the end of it the end and it did really well my very first video ever got like 200k views and I was like hey that was cool this was fun people seem to you know like my page so far nice what am I gonna do next and then I had no idea what I was gonna do next because that wasn't even my joke it was just somebody else's joke that I just a applied to real life and did a stupid little dance in front of the screen because TikTok was about dancing at the time. My next video though, I saw people were doing story times and I was like, okay, I'll do that too. So let's dive right in. How I completely automated my corporate job and made a passive income for myself, part one. So for those of you who've been following along, obviously at this point in the story, I'm working at a big corporation and a lot of the work you do in big corporations is like tons and tons of bureaucracy. So there's lots of data, lots of numbers, things you gotta massage and do and all this stuff. And I start to realize that a large portion of my job is just basically like all the time, like totally just massaging data, looking at spreadsheets and all this really, really boring stuff so that you can talk about it, you know, to others and also really, really boring meeting. The job that I'm talking about is a job that I had previously. So I, I went to school for mathematics as when I got out of school, I got a job at a company called Northrop Grumman, which is you know an aerospace company. And it was a lot of what I'm talking about here is like, taught myself how to automate and make macros and make the things work and when they started working I didn't really have to do much work anymore and that's how I automated my job. That's what the story is about. But what I notice about myself is that I'm so scrawny. I look so different. Like the way that I just look is different. And I was. I was skinnier then. Um, this is right at the pandem pandemic. Now for me in my life there is twice where I've been very broke and had no money, no money. And this is one of them. I was right Right before the pandemic started, right in that area, I was flat broke, had no money. I was like very skinny because I just, I was, I just wasn't living great at that time. I wasn't working anymore. I was trying to, you know, start some businesses and get some things off the ground, make money for myself. And during that time, it was just a struggle. It was just, I was on the struggle bus for sure. The reason why I was holding my camera up like that in front of the mirror, any mirror, but this was the biggest mirror in my house at the time, um, was for dramatic effect. Because there's a feature on TikTok where that when you hold the record button, if you slide your thumb up like this, then it would zoom in. So I can like make punchy points that way visually. And it was just a thing. And I learned that from somebody else on TikTok. And this is how I started sort of, sort of cultivating my first online following, just like telling my stories about my life. And also, by the way, a little hack that happened was that Videos back then could only be a minute long. So I'm long-winded, obviously. 
And so for this to happen, it was like I had to do part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. So if one video didn't hit, part two or three might, and then they'd go back and watch the other video to see the whole story. So it was really, really good for me at first. Um, I was just enamored that, wow, all these people really like my stories. There's 100,000 views, 200,000 views, almost a million views. And this is, I'm only three or four videos into my social media career at this time. Uh, let's keep going. Now at this point in the story, I'm living in Los Angeles. I'm living in a three bedroom, three story townhouse by myself. I got a great deal on it, it's awesome. And I started seeing this girl at the time. Let's call her Michelle. Michelle and I dated for like a year and a half, so she was living with me at this time. But then the relationship ended, as they do. There's a lot of, there's a good reason, and we decided to break up. But the reason why we broke up is because I found out she was a low-key prostitute. I had no idea. She was, I discovered it later into our relationship. She had hid it from me. I had no idea that that was the case. Um, I kind of, it kind of coughed me off guard, actually. She had nowhere to go. It's not like I could kick her out. I did try to kick her out, but I realized she has like absolutely nowhere to go. So yeah, so that's true. So I, once I found out that she was kind of like a lady of the evening, I was obviously upset, mostly because I was deceived, obviously. Um, she was like kind of, she alluded to that she was doing some job, a, a PR. And then instead of that job, she was actually sleeping with dudes and for money. And I had no idea when I found that out, I was very, very upset. And my first instinct was screw this girl, kick her out of the house, put her stuff outside, whatever. But I also knew her very well besides that part. I guess I didn't know her that well. But what happened was is I, because of her situation, I knew that if I kicked her out that night, she had nowhere to go. She, this girl had no friends or family. The only people she knew, I guess, were like, like John's, you know, it was not, it was just not a great situation. If I put her in the street that night, which is what I wanted to do, she would have nowhere to go. And I, and to be honest with you, I loved this girl. I was like, I was actually, I actually loved this girl. And, and I felt so guilty putting her out, knowing she had nowhere to go. This is the middle of the night. I found this stuff out. She's like, I, I, I'm not, I started to. And then she's, i I'm smart and I realize I know this is messed up. I know this is screwed up, but I can't just put you on the street, close the door, knowing you where you're gonna go. She didn't have any money. It would have been like she would have been sleeping in the gutter that night. And maybe I should have done that, but I just couldn't. It just it wasn't. I couldn't do that to her, despite the fact that she had deceived me and hurt me. Um, so I didn't kick her out and let her stay longer at my place. Okay, so now on to the controversial ones. That last one was a little controversial, sure, but this is the one that really got people riled up, and I haven't watched this in a while, so here we go. What it's like being a bachelor in real life. Wait, part wait, one. hang on a second. Just for the record, that bow tie. <laughs> that got the bow tie, though. Oh, no. I just can't believe I was wearing a bow tie and a vest. What was I doing? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, one more time. Here we go. What it's like being a bachelor in real life, part one. Oh boy, I'm about to stir the pot on this one. Now before I begin, I want to preface it with the fact that there are two types of bachelors. One, which is the majority of bachelors, where they don't get a choice. Bachelordom is sort of thrust upon them because of their lack of options with women. And two is when you have plenty of options with women, you just choose to remain single. We're going to be talking about number two. And this is all based on my experience. If you watched some of my previous videos, you already know I've been in throuple situations, I've been in polyamorous situations, I've been in serious long-term monogamous relationship situations. I mean, you name it, I've been there. And of those various kinds of relationships, which am I a fan of the most? I'm not exactly sure. There are pros and cons to each of them. And now before we begin, we gotta lay some terms down. To be a true bachelor, you gotta build what I call a stable. A stable is a rotation of women that you have available to you that you can hit up and they can go on dates with, hang out with, do stuff in the bedroom with, all of that. And you're not dating any of these women, you're still just sort of talking. And I know how this sounds, ladies, but trust me, I'm a romantic. Okay, yeah, all right, okay. The stable part, listen, I get that. I honestly, looking back on it now, I get where people can see that and be like, whoa, hang on a second. Well, women aren't horses. And, and, my, and I remember this vividly, which is the, <laughs> the reality is back then I was like, oh, I was trying to defend it. Like, oh, I'm from the South. I just use these sort of um, analogies and I, I speak in parables sometimes just to tell a story or whatever. Um, and in retrospect, maybe looking back, that wasn't the best. And I probably should, you know, 
at that time couldn't see it. But now, you know, I've grown, I've grown on social media. I, uh, I speak a little bit differently. I'm still animated, um, but I'm not really, I don't really lump things together like that. I'm a little bit more um, careful with how I talk and what I'm talking about so that it's not misleading or demeaning or whatever. It is typically how I operate now. So I definitely wouldn't have said the stable thing. I definitely should have said, you know, made it seem like that women are uh, horses in a stable. I shouldn't have put it, put it that way. What I, but what's more like known, both men and women use, they say things like a roster. They have a roster of guys or a roster of girls. And that's a little bit more fair. It doesn't make anybody, compare anybody to animals. So I shouldn't have said, said it like that. And just because I'm a redneck at heart doesn't mean that that was like appropriate. So I get that. I understand where I got heat for that part. Um, but I still do very much think that if you're gonna be open, just be honest. What it's like being a bachelor in real life, part three. So when I was younger, I was very interested in sexual exploits with women, as most men are. But when you're young, the only way you think you can get away with that is by lying to women. Oh yeah, we're dating, and then go low key and like, oh yeah, we're dating to some other girl, and then guess what? They're both gonna find out eventually, and it's gonna blow up in your face, and you're gonna lose them both. And lying to get what you want sexually out of multiple women works, but it's a really poor way of doing it. It's weak and cowardly. But morality aside, you can have far more sexual experiences with multiple women by being honest. So many relationships are predicated on the fact of just handcuffing each other from having sexual experiences with other people. As if the whole point of the relationship is to police you from having sex with somebody else. And if that's the basis as to why you're with somebody, you're in a bad relationship. That's not a partnership. That's just jail. But I digress. So as an eligible bachelor, what's it like to date several women at the same time? Fucking dope. But there is a dark side to it that most people can't handle. And I'm gonna tell you next. Okay, a lot to unpack there. So, <laughs> for the beginning of that video, I agree with that. The point is, don't lie to women. If you want to be open or polyamorous or whatever, be honest. Don't lie, to, don't, don't lie to women and say, I'm gonna be monogamous to you, and then I'll find another woman and say, oh, I'm gonna be monogamous to you, because that will blow up in your face. During the time of all this stuff, when I was getting a lot of heat, especially for that video, Ralph, about the stable, uh, I had no idea the impact that this would cause like, to my life. Like, I, it was such a devastating, hard life for me for years after that video, because of all of the content that came around, came out about me around particularly that video and others in that time. It was such a devastatingly challenging time in my life. You guys have no idea. Like I lost businesses. My, my mother was getting death threats and doxxed and I had to move and people were filming me outside my house. It was like a whole thing. Uh, I lost so many business opportunities. I lost so many friends. <laughs> Uh, it was, it was not good. And I lived that way for years and years just because of that take and that, you know, I, I agree is a little bit off color or whatever, but man, it was not, I, it was, it was, you know, people put out their videos or reactions or whatever, and it's just LOL post, forget it. But for me, it was years and years of hardship. I went, I went completely broke. I lost so much and uh, learned a lot of lessons uh, and I definitely at over time have learned um, about myself, about kind of what I want to be, who I am, taking bearing responsibility for myself and what I'm about. Um, and then I just took a break and then came back and just started going again. Similar messages, same thing pretty much. Um, I start picking it up, you'll see in the next year, same kind of stuff like men need to make money, you gotta be able to provide for women or they're not gonna like you. Uh, you need to you need to put yourself in a way that is um, selfish at first until you can make something of yourself and so on. I've been mean, same thing preaching to men, but that was a really really challenging time in my life in that video, and I learned a lot about personal responsibility online. Why women cheat in relationships? So I talked about men and it having a roster or whatever, and then the next one I'm talking about uh, why women are cheating. Okay, so I'm gonna skip into this a bit because I'm a bit long winded, obviously, as you know. Uh, but I want to get into, uh, let's start into the, the one that like went viral.
Why Women Cheat in Relationships, part four. It's because women don't want you when you're weak and pathetic and lonely. They want you when you're strong and successful and abundant. That's why Fifty Shades of Grey is so successful. It's a fantasy about a CEO millionaire with six pack abs that's attractive and good looking and does all these crazy sexual things. That's a fantasy for women. They don't want you when you're broke and working in the mail room and trying to get on and you're, when you're still weak. So this was in, this was in March 2020. So I started talking about to men, because I've been talking to men this whole time. And I'm talking to men about, look, women don't want you when you're broke. They don't want you when you're at the bottom. You need to make some money. You need to make a success of yourself. Women want you when you're already a success. Even though, even though uh, I, lo I look silly in this video. <laughs> I mean, I just look so skinny. Uh, in this video, I still, I've been preaching this message for years and years now. Even then, I was talking about uh, girls not liking guys that are broke losers. It was about being a provider, making money, making something of yourself, and then in that process, will you then be attractive to women? Of course, and that's, and that's obvious. I've been, in all my videos, I'm, you know, mostly I'm talking to men, it is what it is, and I'm telling these guys, hey, Nobody cares about you if you're broke. You need to make some money and then women will find you attractive. This has been a message I've been teaching throughout on my social media, all throughout. And worse than that, they don't care about your journey either, like what it took for you to become a high value man. They just want you when you're a high value man. And if you enter into a relationship and then stop wearing the pants in your life and sort of she calls all the shots and kind of tells you and what you guys are gonna be doing. Even though you think you're keeping her happy, you're actually losing power in the relationship and she'll ultimately lose respect for you and then cheat on you. Straight up. Yeah, so if a woman's gonna cheat on you, it's because she doesn't respect you. This was some wisdom right here back in 2020. Uh, if you stop making money and your woman loses respect for you, that's the, that's the recipe for infidelity. That's the thing that's gonna make them not have respect for you as a man and it's going to erode your relationships because it will come with all kinds of problems. Um, yeah, that's, that's dead nuts. Then what are you to do? The answer to attracting and keeping high value women is to learn how to be incredibly selfish so that you can figure out what's important to your life and then you can go and pursue that adamantly and unapologetically. Not bad, not bad. That's right. Be selfish. Get out there, make your money, make something of yourself, become a success through your, through your sheer, sheer determination of will, and then through that success, will you attract and keep a high value woman? Absolutely, couldn't agree more. January, or February 2nd, 2020, Russell Hartley was spot on. All right, nice. Do you guys notice the hand waving? Now, this has been a progressive thing for me. I've always been, I got a camera here, I'm zooming in and out, yeah? I've always kind of been like this, because what else am I supposed to do? Stand there like this. So I wasn't sure really what to do with my hands. I feel like Will Ferrell from the Talladega Nights. Like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I felt like that, honestly. So I'm starting to kind of like ex talk with my hands more and more. As these videos are progressing, and we're still 2020, but as these videos are progressing, I'm getting more like, just more, way more excitable <laughs> as, as I get into the stories. It's so funny to see the progression here. So I'm gonna skip a couple of girlfriends and go straight to the one that sort of gave me that aha moment. I actually met this girl in the parking lot of a Walmart. And actually, I didn't even notice this girl at first. I was actually leaving with a couple of bags and some girl runs up to me and taps me on the shoulder and says, hey, my friend thinks you're cute. To which I respond, oh, and you don't? I couldn't help myself, I just had to. But I turn around and look and see this girl dressed head to toe in a Hooters uniform. And I was like, oh my God, that's my dream. That's a true story. That Natalie, her name's Natalie. Natalie, I'm not gonna say her last name, but her, her friend, her friend, I'll never forget, I was, in a, I was living in Greenville at the time, and I was shop, grocery shopping at a Walmart, and her friend ran up to me at the grocery store and said, my friend thinks you're cute, and she was, she was on her way to work at Hooters. That's so funny. Why men cheat in relationships, part three. So I have this girlfriend slash roommate living at home and then I'm also going to the college basically every day and I'm spending more and more time with the math students, with the math people, like, and all the, basically all the girls there. So I'm studying, I'm spending a lot of time with this one particular girl who's very, very pretty, very, very smart and a couple years older than me. And I don't care what anybody says, whether you're a guy or a girl, you always think in the back of your mind, whether you admit it or not, you're thinking, hmm, something could happen here. And something absolutely did. 
I now know that there's a better way, but at the time I didn't know that. And the only way to have more sexual experiences is by basically having these gr separate girlfriends that I have to lie to to keep apart, but also have feelings for and have relationships with. And I don't know if you guys know this, but let me tell you, if you try doing that shit for long enough, eventually they find out and it just blows up in your face. You end up leaving disaster in your wake, for real. And even more complicated than that, if you start seeing these girls separately, you'll start to develop feelings for both of them. I mean, at the time, I genuinely felt that I was in love with both of them. So you might be thinking, why do it then? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's true. I'm not proud of that, actually. I told the story because it felt necessary and relevant, but uh, I'm not exactly proud of that. I, I did lie to both of them. I did um, f have feelings for both of them, and it, and it did blow up in my face. Absolutely. That was a hard lesson to learn in my early 20s. Okay, for this next one, this is a story that got quite a lot of attention as well. Um, this is about when I was dating two girls at the same time. I was in a poly relationship. They were living with me in my house, and I talked about what it was like living in that circumstance. Uh, here it is. Let's watch it together. What is like living with two girlfriends? Part four. And this sort of cycle of jealousy continues, and it happens all the time. It's legit like playing politics, because sometimes they'll both be mad at me, and they'll both be like quietly cleaning and shit, and like kind of on the same team, and I can hear them talking about me like in the bathroom and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that sort of stuff. Other times, one girl's mad at the other one, and then she's coming to you with stuff, and then you have to play secret stuff. So what I started doing is I put us all in a group chat. So you weren't allowed to text me outside of the ring, but they would still kind of do it. And so that was a big problem, because we needed communication to be clear. So all the time it was that sort of issue you all the time have issues with communication between each other and amongst each other okay so that part right there is a real issue if you're in a poly relationship like where if say there's three people it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what the situation is if there's three people if you are communicating if two people are communicating and leaving the other person out that's a big problem that's, and it's and they'll be they'll become this thing where it's like it's like among siblings they'll be like favorites happening like they'll carve out favorites and it, it changes all the time who the favorites are and what will happen in that situation is that they will gang up on you if there are secret conversations happening on the side um, outside of you in text messages or in private and excluding the person you're in a polyamorous throuple with or something like this you're gonna have problems. Like the problems manifest in so many different ways. So the, we made a rule so that if we're gonna talk, we all talk at the table, same time. So, we had a, so I said, let's do a group chat. Boom, group chat. That way we can all talk. Some, some person can say what they have to say, another person can say what they have to say, and another person can say what they have to say, and we all heard it, we all saw it, we all know the context at all times. That was straight up a solution. That really, really did work because it used to not work because of the secret conversations and then we compiled them all together and it fixed the problem. But that being said, polyamory in general is super complicated and it's, it's, it takes a certain type of person. That's not really what I'm about these days. Um, I've had this experience. It is what it is. It's if I can talk to it, but communication in any kind of poly relationship is a real challenge. Really it is. Why men lie? Now, this is one I talk about even now, about men lying to women. And, but this is, this is an important point. This is back, back in 2020. Let's see, uh, let's see what I had to say. Why men lie to hook up with women? Part three. And that right there is the worst lie of all. You know you could be dating a girl for six months, a year, two years, five years. You, but you know, maybe you don't say it out loud, maybe you don't even admit it to yourself, but you know in the back of your mind, this ain't wifey, I'm not gonna get married to this girl, but you're happily willing to continue the relationship, potentially wasting the best years of her life. I mean, that's probably when she's gonna be the youngest and prettiest and most marketable to high value men. That's right, I mean, even, even in April 2020, that's right, guys will, guys will waste a woman's time. They will drag them along knowing full well they're not gonna marry them. Um, and I'm telling, and, and back then I was telling, you know, guys lie to women in this way and, and they'll string you along for six, seven years, eight years, a decade, and then they'll marry the waitress. Guys will marry the guys, well, the, guys will marry the women that are right in front of them when they're ready. That's the deal. So as a woman, you got to be careful and discerning with who you date. Um, that was good advice. Yeah, hell yeah. I keep seeing so much lately that women are living their life on easy mode, and I'm here to tell you that that's absolutely true. But only in direct proportion to how pretty they are and how much they put themselves out there, like on social media or whatever.
Because what men value is their youth and beauty. So we're happy to flex our socioeconomic status to pay for them and take them on expensive trips and like take them to cool parties, stuff like that. And girls, especially on social media, are super aware of this. That's why basically every TikTok trend is just some new excuse to show some part of their body. That's just marketing. And I'm all for it. I mean, some of my best relationships have started from a thirst trap. And some women will say, oh, that's just shallow or there are white knights out there that'll be like, well, I'm not shallow, I go for personality. Really? If you were physically attracted to her in the first place, you wouldn't have even talked to her at all. What are you talking about? And as a man, you may be living your life on hard mode now, but if you're willing to work, you can increase your marketability as a high value mate every single year forever. That's right. It's, if you are a very pretty woman and on social media, you will get more offers. It is easier to date than somebody who never leaves their house, isn't on social media, doesn't take care of their health and fitness. That's obvious. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. Uh, and yes, that's right. Men should get their money up. That's Yeah, I mean pretty much. Oh, this one's about body count. Does your body count matter? I literally hear this question every day and fair enough due to the nature of my lifestyle It is it's a fair question. And how do you even answer a question like that? I mean the answers are either zero or more than that Like does it somehow make you a different person if you slept with three people or if you've slept with seven people? I mean come on I mean, does it really matter how many times you've gotten off with another person in the room? Think about it. Like, what an irrelevant question. I mean, we might as well ask, how many times have you masturbated? At the end of the day, if you've slept with one person a thousand times or a thousand people one time, as long as you don't have an STD, who gives a shit? And if you're one of those people who have made up like an arbitrary rule to live their life by, oh, well, the persons only have to have slept with six people or fewer or else I can't even consider them as a human being. That's, that's insane. That You need to rethink it. So instead of asking a question where there's no way you couldn't judge somebody based on their answer. So let me offer a better question. Do you have an STD? No? Then saddle up, partner. <laughs> That's funny because it was at the time it was so much like still the still now people are like oh your body count this and that I always thought that was a silly question I personally don't even ask I don't, I don't want to know some things I don't need to know I didn't know you before me it's not really relevant so uh, even, even back then I was yeah I was focus on what's in front of you uh, don't be so judgmental you never know but I, I, bit, I know that's a bit of a controversial take but that's my that's my, I still think this. And that's basically 2020. I go on to tell a few more stories, do some silly jokes. That was kind of the whole thing. So I was known on TikTok as the suit guy. So my following as it started to grow, people really liked the suit game and, the, and I started to fill out my suit so I looked better a little bit at this time. And then I started just buying suits for people, like TikTokers that I knew or that I knew of that what I would connect with. And they're like, yeah, sure, the suit sounds great because a lot of guys would like suits and would like to have a nice suit. So I would just get them suits just Dead ass, I just buy them suits. And it was a great time. It's a couple of videos like that. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was a cool, that was a good time. Men, we should focus on our social and economic status, increase our wealth, increase our, our position in society, and women will come. That is good advice across the board for men, especially men that are looking to date better. Okay, but then now the red pill is all about bullshit. It's all about fucking hating women and like being mad that women are entitled during the time when they're in their dating prime. And it's like, why are you mad, bro? Are you mad at them or are you mad at yourself that you're not getting them? You get what I'm saying? That's the real answer. And so the red pill became, became, has become this situation where it's not what it used to be. And now it's just like they don't like women. And it's like, what the fuck? What? Why, if you don't like women, why are you dating women, bro? You're just frustrated that you're not there yet and you're just mad at women, generally speaking. That's the answer. And so that's, that's also no good. It's a really toxic world. So around this time, I was selling dating courses for men and women. So I had a course for men on uh, how, to, how to get a girlfriend and then I have a course for women on how to spot a player. Uh, and I was going live all the time, four or five times a week and just answering questions, talking, and to my surprise, I had more women followers than men and they were more curious about my thoughts on dating or like the dating landscape, whatever. And that's, that format, that Q&A format, I like, I like that. I still do that today. It's my favorite type of content. I was doing this and saying this three years ago, three and a half, almost four years ago. That's, the, that's your responsibility as a man. What's the alternative? You just fucking play Madden or 2K or whatever all day long on Xbox. You should be celebrated for that. 
you know? Women have to bear the burden of carrying a fucking a person in their in their belly and then and then squeeze out a whole human being like the movie fucking Alien. And then and then breastfeed and care for that kid and and put their whole body through hell in the process and it is probably for most women the most important thing they'll do in their entire fucking life and maybe even on the only only significant thing they'll ever do in their entire existence and as a man you don't have to do any of that shit you just fuck them and so what is then your job like your job is to make sure that that woman and that kid fucking eats and doesn't get attacked by whatever the fuck okay so same kind of content more stories silly tweets more like men, women, dating stuff. Uh, and that, I would go the long breaks between posts. I want to get more consistent. That's why I'm getting on here now. But I was jumping because it didn't matter that much to me. Social media didn't matter that much to me. So I was just going long periods between posting. Um, so all the way now, I'm in the beginning of 2023. What do women bring to the table? Lately, I've been seeing this question asked everywhere. And if you're asking that question, you don't understand women or relationships at all. Let me prove it to you using the table analogy. If the table is the relationship, a man's responsibility is typically to put the meat on the table. And the woman's responsibility is typically to set the table. And what that means is that a woman civilizes a man. If it wasn't for women, most of you guys would be living in a one-bedroom apartment with a double bed, a single pillow, one blanket, one chair in your living room, and a sick-ass gaming setup. It would be efficiency only. I know how it is. And I'm not saying that a woman's job is just to bring furniture in your house. I'm saying that a good woman won't let you play video games 12 hours a day because there's more to life. Women see your potential. They see what you can be a lot of times before you even do. And when they harp on you, it's because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing as a man. Women see you. They see you at your worst times. The, they see the parts of you that other people don't see. And by some miracle, choose to love you anyways. And through that love for you, they will push you to realize that potential that they see in you. And also, they do this sort of instinctually. It's like a part of their process of selecting a mate. Like they're looking for the potential in men. And they see it. They see it in you. And when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, they bitch at you and give you a hard time. They, and until you like straighten up and realize it. They help you realize your potential. Some of them. Some of them. If they're living with you and they see that you are squandering your potential, it's gonna come out of them in very interesting ways. They're gonna nag you, they're gonna harp on you, they're gonna be upset with you because they know you can be so much more than the lazy asshole that you probably are by default, okay? So that is what women bring to the table. They civilize men and teach them responsibility, the value of family and community, all of which requires you to step up to the plate and become the best version of yourself to set an example for your kids and the people around you. That's what women bring to the table. I hope that helps. Okay, so interesting thing about this video is that the same kind of thing, same thing, preachy stuff, teaching guys about girls, uh, kind of pointing out things that women find important and so on. But what's interesting about this video is that I talk about the table, I actually thump on a piano. That, this is the beginning of 2022. So this is around the time that I was really focused on like some personal growth, my own personal growth. and. Up until, the, up until this time, I've never like, played an instrument in my life. And I, at, I moved into this place and I started playing this piano. I hired an instructor, she came to my house three times a week and she would just show me piano. And now I play the piano uh, every day, every single day. And I post it on my Instagram and it's a, it's a really fun, really fun thing. It's been part of my journey. So around this year, I was taking a break from social media. I wasn't really posting on it. Uh, I was just living life, focusing on my growth, like I said. Um, but then, so we're gonna jump ahead five months, basically, to my next post. So many guys are complaining about women's hypergamous nature. Let me ask you this, honestly. What is wrong with a woman choosing the best possible mate for herself in her life? I literally see guys like, oh, she's a gold digger and like she only wants to date guys that have this great life and are way up here socially and economically. Now I said this two years ago, but I was saying this two years before that, just it's, there's nothing wrong 
with a woman wanting rich dudes. That's, that think that's sort of natural. They want successful guys because of the characteristics that come with being successful. It's like, yeah, so fucking what? What's wrong with that? I don't get it. She's not allowed to date the best possible guy for her? What the fuck? Are you mad at women because of this? Or are you really mad at yourself because you are not getting the women that you want? They're, They're mad at themselves. You're frustrated that they choose other guys over you. You literally have all of the tools available to make your life dope. And you're complaining that women don't have to work as hard to do dope stuff. Like, do you want... Do you want women to have to work as hard as you or something? What's the problem here, really? Instead of being frustrated at women, why not just make your life better and then get the women you want? Because now you're among the men that she would choose to date. Why not do fucking that instead of deferring responsibility and just complaining that women choose better guys than you? The fuck? Yeah, so God, I've been saying this for years, but Notice, I noticed in these tags, I tagged the fresh and fit guys. Now, I don't have a problem with them individually, but you'll know, you'll know about me, people that watch my page and watch my channels, any of them. I've never been on a men's podcast. I will do sometimes like lives with folks on occasion, uh, but it oftentimes comes across as like disjointed, this and that, whatever. But the, I think that the red pill men's podcast style sit at a round table where it's just a bunch of men in their 30s and 40s just berating women in their you know between 19 and 25 or whatever it's just these young girls sitting at this table debating these older men whose entire agenda is to just shit on them the whole point of these podcasts is to just like make them look bad and I never wanted to be a part of that. Those guys invited me to their show a couple of times. Uh, I've been invited to other, other shows just like it a couple of times. And I never did it because I was a guy in the space. I was, I was a talked about guy in the space. And I've been approached many times to go on those podcast shows. And I never wanted to do it because A, I think the Red Pill community has gone way too far. I don't think it's anything like what it's, what it's used to be, which is like, it used to be like, oh, hypergamy. Meaning, you as a man, make yourself somebody of interest and then that will attract the right women in a natural way. That's what it was, but now it's turned into a whole other thing. And then, and then those guys are now just dogging on women for having life and making their own choices, you know? And it's like an unfair fight where it's just like they come in there armed with facts with the intent to make them look stupid and the girls just come in and are like, well, I wanna get some visibility from this. And then they're just getting absolutely like accosted over a, over a thing. I didn't wanna be a part of that. I've never wanted to be a part of that. But these guys were popping at the time and so because they were popping up, put that hashtag in there, but you'll know, everybody will know, I've never been on those kinds of shows, ever. Because um, I think the format is just unfair and stacked against women, and I've never, I've never wanted to be that guy. Um, that's why I've never attended those shows, even despite the invitations. Okay, so now we're at the end of 2022. There's a good reason why women go after successful guys. Sitting around and complaining that women are choosing more successful guys is your problem. You would rather sit around and complain that life isn't fair rather than taking responsibility for your situation. Complaining bodes to your character and your mindset, and it's hurting you. So just work. Get at the level that they'll want you. You have a future family to support. Successful guys come with an entirely different mindset. Personally, I've never been married before because I haven't found the right one yet, but I'd want my girl to be walking around town with a big-ass rock so that everyone would know that that's my wife and you couldn't afford her. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You gotta, this is what I've, that's what I've been saying. Make money. You gotta be able to adorn your wife with the, with the necessary jewels <laughs> so that everybody knows, oh shit, that's his girl. That's dope. That's awesome. I was saying this, was 2022? You make more money so that you can provide for your family and then give them gifts that make them look like that's, so that they're proud that you're her man. You see what I'm saying? This has been my message throughout the whole time, the whole time, and I couldn't agree with myself more. Good job two years ago, me, and some change. So many men are upset about women's impossible standards in the United States, and so much so that they're fleeing the country to find foreign women, like in Colombia or uh, Eastern Europe or whatever. But boys, here's the problem with that. Women are right.
women create the standard of which to rise to. Because if you didn't have that pressure from the opposite sex, you wouldn't do anything. You would do nothing. You wouldn't bother getting in shape. You wouldn't bother trying to make something yourself, make any money. You wouldn't bother doing fucking much. Because what for? <laughs> What's the point? You're not trying to attract a woman. Just stay at home. Live with your mama. That's it. What seems to be happening is men, particularly in America, are being very resentful of these standards that women create. And I say, you should embrace it. Straight up, work out more. You should get in shape. Make more money. You should try to become rich. Do the things that would attract women overall, and your life as a whole will improve. And by doing so, women being attracted to you is just a byproduct of that success. That's dope. You should do that. Women are right. Same thing, same, same old, same old. Uh, make more money, women will find you attractive. Uh, it's, that's, that's just my, that's my whole thing. And then, you know, that's been my content. And then, and then now I, in, in to 2024, I got this one. So what? Women want you to pay for things. Oh, she's a gold digger, bro. She just wants you for your money. Yeah, so what? No shit. What should they do? Do you think that they should date you for all the untapped potential you imagine you have? And I also just think it's weird that you don't want to pay expensive stuff for your woman. Personally, I like women with nice taste. So when they're out in the world or by my side, that's a representation of me. So if she looks good, she's put together, she's got the bag, she's got the earrings, she's got the necklace, whatever, that makes me look good. She's driving around a, a nice car through the city and people know that that's, oh shit, that's his girl. That's dope. I like that. So I don't understand why people are complaining. And what should you do? What's the alternative? Should you have a sports car and your wife is driving around a Toyota Corolla? What, what is it? What do you want? Of course they want to eat off your plate and you should want that for them. What are you upset about? Yeah, so that's my, my little dog Max joined me. Um, he's my boy. Um, so anyways, that's exactly right. So it's the same thing. It's, this is what I've been saying this whole time. And what's, what's interesting is that it's still me. It's still me being frustrated at men, sort of in general, just saying, hey, why are you upset that women want more from you? Why are you upset that women want provider men? Are you upset at women? Are, so you call them gold diggers or whatever? Are you upset at women? Or are you just upset with yourself because you haven't gotten to a place where you can afford it yet? Is, what's the issue? What is it really? This is what I've been saying this whole time. Men have to make money. You have to be able to provide for your woman. That's the whole deal, full circle. I've been saying this since day one. Make money, you'll be more attractive to women, provide for your woman, and then they'll, they'll take care of you. That's the whole thing, that's the whole game. But as you can see, my content's evolved quite a lot. It's much more uh, smooth, it's much more mature. I've grown as a person, my content's grown with me. That's sort of the whole thing. And I, I love doing this stuff, especially the live stream. So I promise I'm gonna get more active on YouTube. Uh, that's why this video, I wanted to start kind of like where I've come from to where I am now. And uh, I'm excited to keep like going down this path and uh, you know, doing more content. Oh, this is Max, by the way, he's been helping. He's my boy, Max. He's, I don't know if you saw him in the camera, with, he uh, wears a tie like I do. See, look, cute little tie. My boy, had Max for like nine years. He's gonna be helping me in my videos going forward. If you, if you want, okay, okay, you don't have to. <laughs> okay, well, that's, a, I mean, that's about it. Uh, most of my, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically been the same ever since. Um, I'm excited to get more on the content game, so. More to come, guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Thanks, Max, for joining me. We'll see you next time.